Our first speaker I'm super excited about, um, his name is Peter Ingersoll. He is a self-employed WordPress site builder, maintainer, and trainer. He lives in South Windsor, Connecticut with his wife, Leah, and their three cats, Binks, Milo, and Tasha. And I just got to hear all about these cats, and they sound wonderful. I make maybe a cat person now. Um, hi, Peter. Hi, Peter yeah. started in websites creation back when slicing images and table-based design was the norm. He discovered WordPress right around the release of version 3.0, and from there went the somewhat common path of the Kubrick-themed Genesis, then the page builder, Beaver Builder, and now the block editor with tools like Cadence. If you think you might have heard his name before, Peter can often be found in many online web WordPress meetups in chats for live events or streams, um, or trying to help in WordPress Facebook groups. Although he doesn't technically call himself a developer, Peter likes to consider himself an admin and DIY advocate. Peter is the co-organizer of the WordPress Hartford Meetup, where they have not missed a monthly meeting since its relaunch in 2018, which is amazing. And not all WordPress meetups can say that. Peter and co-organizer Ray Minko, I hope I'm saying that right, Minko, host Minko. and present at most of their meetups, including all their online meetups for the last three years. Recently, Peter delivered an accessibility presentation, which prompted the idea of his talk today. Peter, how are you? I'm doing really well. Yeah, I'm excited to kick things off. And this is really fun. We were, were talking right before about how this being, you know, an all live event is kind of unusual, but great. And hope everybody yeah. understands the the flubs and the and the yes. impromptu and and all of that because it's 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 part of the fun of learning with other people. It is part of the fun. It yeah, I'm super excited. I honestly love all the flubs. It's and just yeah. makes it feel like it's more live, which is what this is. It feels like we're together in a, in a yep. sense that when you're together, then then things don't always go perfect. But That's I right. think it'd be a great day. So thanks so much for being here. Um, and yeah, I will turn the mic over to you. Great. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, my presentation is on presentations. Um, I uh, it, We're calling it uh, Build a Slide Presentation in Cadence, uh, WP in Cadence. Um, I use the Cadence tools, um, as, as we were just talking about going from Beaver Builder to Cadence. So I um, thought it was a good match with some of the things that I've recently done. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so yeah, I make and maintain WordPress websites. I use a variety of tools, including the Cadence Suite. Um, I do have the, the full suite. I have a couple of other um, tool sets that I like too, but uh, I've been focusing most of my time in Cadence because it's just, it's proving to be the fastest, you know, most um, uh, robust way of building the things that I do for the most part. Um, and in a recent, uh, we mentioned the Hartford Meetup, and in a recent Hartford Meetup, actually in two, I used WordPress instead of PowerPoints for slides. And that was this presentation here called um, Getting Started with WordPress Accessibility. And we had been using PowerPoint slides, but the idea of making the presentation in the tools that we use, I thought was really um, something that would work out. So I created this, and then um getting you know wh why doing this presentation is you know after after creating that presentation i then enjoyed just two days later um rachel winchester had presented on the um the wp builds page builder summit if anyone attended that and she had coincidentally a presentation called death to slide decks why your next presentation needs to be a web page i'm like hmm a little serendipity it's like you know yeah I, i'm a, I'm, you know, in agreement with that. Her presentation uh, is available online, um, and she really, you know, she has a, a, a different approach. Rachel's a, a designer, so, you know, what's great about this is it shows the different ways you can give a presentation um, online. So I, I was kind of inspired by that, and then the word went out for Cadence Amplify, um, looking for speakers, and I thought, again, uh, a nice, nice tie-in, um, and so. You know, my goal is to give some ideas on how and why you can approach um, presentations differently. And that could be for um, meetups, WordPress meetups, even, you know, business meetings, you know, any kind of time that you're kind of maybe your go-to go tool, go -to tool is Keynote or um, PowerPoint. Um, 
that you know even even slide share and some of the other tools that are out there for building slides that you know think about how using a website using the tools that we have can actually give you a lot more flexibility um so that's one of the one of the kind of the why use web page presentations which by the way that's what we're looking at right now and one is there's a lot more flexibility. There's a lot of things that you can do, a lot more flexibility that I'm finding um, and, you know, making it easier to collaborate. Ray and I can now share, uh, you know, on a server, a, a website when what we were doing before was creating a PowerPoint, sending it back and forth, putting it up on the screen while then going to a browser for our demonstrations in the Hartford um, WordPress meetup. Um, but being able to collaborate, easier to edit on the fly. I've actually, in a presentation, fixed things while working on things because I've got the, the, the browser admin window open, maybe in the second monitor, or even in front of folks. I like to show people what we do and we can, we can build off the presentation. We're gonna be doing that today and th this morning, looking at what we're looking at from the back end. Um, making things dynamic and interactive, you know, basically, and everybody knows, whatever, whatever you can do in your browser, with a website, with web pages, is what we're talking about can be included in um, an online presentation using slides. Um, the variety of content that can be displayed, um, you know, immediately shareable is a great thing. You know, <laughs> how many times are you in a presentation and then, you know, all the questions come up, you know, are the slides going to be available? When can I get the slides? And then, depending on how they're created, maybe a PDF is created from a word. Uh, WordPress presentation. So that ability to be able to say, go to that slot, go to that site, you know, right now, if you went to slides.ingersollwp.com slash amplify, you will see the presentation that I'm giving right now. It is, it is live on a website. Um, so that, you know, that immediate shareability is great. Um, works well in a variety of environments and devices, you know, using a mobile uh, device is, is, um, you know, works well with a website that is already built to be responsive, which, you know, what we're looking at with the Cadence Cadence tools um, and the Cadence theme, you know, that's built in. You know, there's some tweaking and some things, and that's kind of, you'll see in my, you know, going forward, but it, it works great in a lot of environments. Even if you're indoors and you're projecting it on a screen, and I'll show later, you know, the idea of that, if you go to dark mode, reverse the colors, it's like, oh, that will work better for indoors when you're projecting on a screen. Instead of white with a little dark, you can, you know, you can have that nice contrast of the of the lighter colored letters. <clears throat> so that works really well. Um, honestly, it's what we know, right? So if we're working in WordPress, we know how to use it. So, you know, we develop the skills and we're practicing and knowing it instead of going off to a different tool. And, you know, demonstrating the power of the tools that we use is, is I think, a, a, a great thing. So kind of in a nutshell, the elements of my approach, um, all the slides are in one poster page. So I'm, we're looking at right now a WordPress post. Um, all of these slides are just in that post. Each in, in, I chose to go the route of each slide is a row with a vertical height of 100%. And that allows me to just kind of pop up a slide because now it fills the screen. Um, the title of each slide is an H2 heading. Um, and there's a reason for that, which is a couple down. Uh, points down. The slide content is built with blocks. It's all blocks. So that's, you know, again, the tools that we know. The table of contents block is added as a sticky sidebar uh, widget to show a list of slides. So by using the table of contents block and using the uh, the H2 um, advanced uh, text um, block and making it an H2, my slide list over here on the side is automatically generated as I build slides because it's it's a table of contents block. It's a cadence, the, the cadence table of contents block does this automatically, which is great. Um, then once you're in, the rows can be copied uh, to add more slides. Um, and then we'll talk about a little bit about block patterns. Um, and you know, the design and styling is is completely wide open, which is which is great. You know, that that ability to be able to, you know, you're looking at my relatively plain approach. It works for me for a lot of what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, we can get as fancy as you need. I'm using default fonts, which work really well. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the approach, you know, the, the this list, and we'll go over it in a little bit of detail. And the detail is right now, let's, let's take a look. Um, and, and start creating. So what I've done, let's make sure, yep, that's loaded is 
I've created this, this um, second presentation. It's slides.ingersollwp.com build, um, which kind of breaks down those points that I, that I just discussed. So um, in building the slide, now, by the way, this is a Lottie, a Cadence Lottie animation block. I'll show that on the back end. So, so the first step, that create the row um, that, that is the slide. I use a one column row. Um, I style it for no padding, uh, give it a top and bottom margin. You know, I'm giving the details of what I've done here. Then the section that's inside the row, that one column, you know, I gave it a border um, of two pixels, a background of uh, color of white, um, the padding of 2x, and that's that will result in this white box here. So if we go um, and look at this, let's see, did that open up for us uh, right there? So now on the back end, I'm looking at this is that whole presentation in the editor. So now the slide that I was just showing you, that first, the first step in building the slide for me was to create this row that is just basically a white box. I went with white. You can use gradient backgrounds. You can use it. Anything that you can do in the block, you can use in your presentation. Now what I'm going to do, and I could just show that's that's the beauty, right? So I can show you the slides on the on the front end, or I can I'm looking at the same thing on the back end, which is which is great because now you can kind of see the things in action. So the next thing I do is I'm looking at this block, and for my choice, I wanted to go um, full top to bottom, as I said, to be able to sh kind of show one slide at a time. Um, so what I do, I go to edit the section, go to the block options, advance. Uh, structure settings and set the minimum height to 100% uh, vertical. So if I click on that that section, right? So I'm that's the block that I'm editing, and then I go into uh, advanced and structure settings. Um, you can see. Okay, let's see. Did I grab the right? The one thing you'll find if you haven't is make sure they're always grabbing the right block. Um, I probably put it on, and you, I found that you can go either way with the row or the section. Yeah, so in this case, I'm looking at, um, oh, no. Remember, in in WordPress, uh, in the editor, your your active block is the one showing here. The one above it is to the left. So I am in the section, just as I said. I think I must be clicking on something inside. Anyway, that's where my minimum height now is set uh, in advanced settings. Um, the, in the structure settings to 100% VH. So you have the different choices here. Now you can you can change that. You may find that the, depending on how you've done your layout, you don't want it 100%. You want it at you know, 80% or 50 or, or whatever. You can change that. But 100% um, is filling the screen. So that's the next step, taking that row and making it a slide. The next step is to start adding elements now to your, your full height row with the section inside. And now I'm where I was showing up the, the content as a, in the instructions outside. Now I'm inside. Now I have the slide. And and here's a slide right here. Um, and here's the elements. So the elements that I'm using, um, looking at our list view, which is a fantastic way if you're not using the list view when you're building your sites, you know, make it a habit. In fact, um, mine is open. Thank you, Jamie Marslin, uh, for his video and some tips and, and keeping that list view open automatically is 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 great it makes my work environment and workflow work well for me so in my section i have my advanced text um that advanced text oh let's make sure i'm on the yeah so that advanced text is and this is important is an h2 the reason it's it's important that it's an h2 is because the table of contents block is looking for headings and i'm going to set our table of contents block to look for h2s to build that table of contents um, for that post. So that's where this works really well together because you're automatically generating based on the fact that your uh, advanced text is set to H2. So that's my slide, I, uh, that's my title. I styled it to be center. I set the size to what I wanted, the colors. Styling, completely up to you. I put in the, a divider here. So a space divider, just a simple line. Um, I, I put in, in, in this example, an image, I'm using the advanced image um, block that's that's floating right. And then I'm using the icon list. Now the icon list, cadence block, you can use a, any block, doesn't have to, none of this has to be cadence specific, but there's benefits and pros and cons. And since, since this is cadence amplify, that's what I focused on and that's what I use. 
Um, the icon list uh, is its own block. And one thing that's nice about the icon list is if you wanted to do something different with the icons or make one um, one item have a, a standout or whatever, you have more control over your list items. Um, so now I've got a full slide coming back to my my actual main presentation um, where I am looking at the slide elements. This is my, and we'll show you how we got that, the table of contents block. But this is that slide now showing on the front end. It's a complete slide for a presentation. Now I'm back on the back end, um, adding a slide list to the sidebar. So that, we'll get into that where I'll show you under appearance widgets, um, setting the sidebar, a table of contents block, styling that block, and again, making that uh, that table of contents block look at H2. So I'll do that by, I'm going to open up a new tab. Um, by the way, when I'm done at the end of the day, I'm closing 50 tabs at least. Um, probably a lot of other folks are too. <laughs> so if I go to appearance widgets, we're in a, we're in a classic theme. So we're still looking at things like, like widgets. And here's my sidebar one. And in my sidebar one, I've already added the table of contents block. This is the table of contents block. Um, it is um, uh, in the cadence um, block package. And I've set this, I've got it H2 and H3. I don't use H3. I can just set the um, allowed headers. The, the, the headings that it's going to, the, the headings that it's going to look to put in that list um, is controlled by the allowed headers choices. You can go as deep as you want. Um, set the styling, which might, you know, the font size for the title, the list, and so on. So again, like any other block, you've got a lot of the control here. I've got no padding on this. A little bit of margin at the top to move it down. You can control all this. But this is now sitting in the sidebar. So now I have, what's neat is, even though it's in the sidebar, it's reading the content of the post, so it works. And if you have multiple presentations, you just have to use that sidebar, and the table of contents will always work for the post of slides. Or you could do a page, a page of slides um, that corresponds. So those slides will show up in the table of contents, even though it is but one uh, widget um, or block put into a into a widget area um, uh, on the back end. So that widget area is created is 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 there, and to see that. Now I'm back onto the front end, yep. And if I go to, um, if I actually, let me go to the edit the post. So if I go to edit the post and now go to um, post settings, this is where we'll see the different ways that you can share the post. So you can set it in default. And again, maybe I, I'm assuming a lot of folks are familiar with this, but this is how I'm using it here. So the uh, I'm putting the uh, table of contents using that right sidebar. My default is sidebar one. You could choose it, but it's that's the default, and that's where I'm where I'm showing it um, over here on on the right. Now, one thing I, I forgot to mention that's really important is in if I remember where it is. Um, so sidebar. In the sidebar settings. I'm drawing a blank on where it is. There's a place where you set it to be sticky. Hannah, if you're there, do you remember where that is? Huh. Um, scroll, scroll settings, doy, right there. Um, and that is that is the thing that makes this while I'm scrolling or clicking, it makes your table of contents lock in on the right side because. Again, in the cadence theme, this is specific to cadence, and there's different ways to do it. There are sticky blocks um, that can be put into things. But what's great about cadence is it's built in. Um, we have, uh, actually, that's scroll settings. Did I miss it again? It's here. Um, I will. I will come back to that, but there is definitely a setting. It's one little click to make the uh, the scroll the sidebar sticky. I'll come back to that. Apologize for not having that in the top of my head. Getting back to then that full list. Keep an eye on the time. Um, 
We now move down to, um, oh, I probably have it right here on my next slide. That's so typical of me. Um, show or hide the sidebar. That's what I just showed you, setting the uh, control um, in post settings. Uh, style the sidebar and customer, just as, as we said. Then we go to building your presentation is just a matter of, and I'm still now on the editor, you, you come to your row. If I duplicate that row, I now have a new slide and I can just, you know, uh, new slide, new content. And so now if I update my presentation, this is where I now have that new slide just happens automatically. And here's where the table of contents pulling that dynamic content just puts the slide where I want it. It's the right height. It's got it's got what we need. Um, you know, I could put I just sloppily put in some of this content, um, that type of thing. But here's the other thing about duplicating the rows you could do it right in the editor um but where it gets really neat is if you save completed row rows for easier use i am able to do it in the cadence cloud and i've also done it using um a a custom block pattern i i'm not a developer there's some really good uh, plugins that you can use that make block patterns as custom post types and then they go into a library that you could pull down from and what that does is it allows you then to just you a slide is now a block pattern and you can pull it pull it um, as you need it. Um, so when you build it, you like it, you can save it to if you're using Cadence Cloud to your your cloud server, um, make a copy, put it up uh, in the cloud in your uh, Cadence Cloud and then call it anytime you want. Um, and I'll show you that right now. So if I go to this row and then I can I'll remove that because I don't need it. But now say I'm over here and I want to add um, a new slide. I can go to my design library. This is My design library is now connected to my Cadence Cloud. So here's Ingersoll Cadence Cloud. Um, and now I have different, you know, say I want a new um, title slide. I just clicked on that and that brought in a basically a block pattern that's saved up into the Cadence Cloud. And now I have this you know, a title slide that I want. And then say right after that, um, I want to go and add um, a, a big, what I'm calling a big quote slide, you know, and you get, it's all laid out just the way I laid it out um, earlier with, you know, the, the title, this is an H2 and an advanced text, the divider that I'm using consistently. But this pattern just has a big quote, you know. It's almost like go into your PowerPoint and look at your, your slide master and you could see the different thing. You could do the same type of things. If you created a a, um, a table slide that you like and you want to save it and, and call it back up for future presentations and all. So what's great is over time, as you build this library, whether you're saving it into a Cadence Cloud, putting it into a side presentation or saving it as a block pattern, you could just call those up and then build things more and more quickly. You just bring it in and now it's feeling more like the, the slide softwares that we're kind of used to where you bring up a template and sort of fill in the blanks with the ability to just really, you know, kind of go, go crazy on, on, on how, um, on how you, you know, develop and continue to style and things going forward. So that's, that's the build. That's the pieces that go into the build. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on that when I get back to it. I want to, I can show you some interesting things in terms of even experimenting and stuff. So um, if there are any questions, you know, we'll, we'll gather them up. Um, I think we're good on time. Um, so moving forward, um, and this is for me, uh, and, and what I want to do is keep using WordPress and Cadence for slide presentations, continue to tweak the design for optimal creation process. And that means, you know, again, continuously improving not only you know the look and the and the workflow I get that so I get the work uh, the look that I want um, working on fluent type photography for greater flexibility so for example um, if I were to look at this presentation let me see if I could do this real quick um, 
as if I were on a mobile device. You know, making sure that I've styled these in such a way. This is a great, again, a great example of your slides become immediately available uh, and then making them work in a way uh, that is better designed. You know, so you're tweaking that design. And this is where we are now moving more and more into uh, a lot of flexibility and ease in in making all of this work even more seamlessly and 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 cleaner right now it's going in and saying okay for a for a phone use this size font and this spacing and things like that once you build it in a slide template or in a in a in a block pattern and you bring it in um, it makes that whole process easier because you're saving it once and you're just copying you're you're bringing in and filling in with the new content um, but that you know, making that work uh, all the better um, is a goal for me. Um, continuing to build out that uh, slide, the slide block patterns. And then, I, yeah, I, I I will be sharing through Cadence Cloud, you know, different options uh, for this. I mean, quite honestly, why not? You know, I'm, I'm doing it and if folks can can benefit. So um, sharing that information, I think, is, is, uh, is, it's there. We have the tools to be able to, um, Say, hey, I've created these block patterns. I'm putting them in my my Cadence Cloud. If you're using Cadence, you can hook up. I give the codes on how you, to hook up to that, um, and then you can um, you can pull those into your own presentation and start building it. And, and again, remember that the styling is is all up to you to have control over. Um, one thing I did want to show, and and this goes into the difference between. Um, the pro, I have not turned on the pro tools. I don't, I'm not using any pro blocks. And I definitely don't have the pro, um, pro cadence theme on right now. But one thing you can do is with pro, you can go into dark mode, or I can just do it under my um, colors and fonts and pick a different palette. And now that same presentation, if I were to come back, I've got that same presentation um, in a way that you know, this might work better if I'm, you know, in a in a room and I'd probably tweak this and try it, but the idea of the white text on the dark background, and that's just choosing a different palette. Um, in Pro, there's, there's I'll have a little um, dark mode button in the bottom corner to use. But again, that, that the beauty of having that already done and now just changing that with one click is uh, um, pretty awesome and, and something that I, that I really like doing, you know, having that that functionality and discovering more of that functionality going forward is is um, a big part of what now making this uh, a practice for me um, and I, you know for anyone else who's looking to to do that um, I've got a little kind of an experiments area that I'm doing look so here's a presentation um, I'm not right now showing the sidebar but it's built in I'm just hiding it um, this is the Lottie um, block that shows Lottie files. And this is an animation that is just pulled over from um, the Lottie website. So there's an example of you start adding, you can add in videos, animations. Um, we can animate the things that are coming and going. I'm, I, I'm not into that, but a lot of folks are, you know, just like, you know, making things fly across the screen. Um, what else did I, have I done it? So, if we wanted to do anything in the experiments, you know, we could do this. I don't know if anyone's got anything specific that they want to look at, but I'm going to be building this out. You know, putting in a chart uh, plugin with and putting a um, you know a pie chart or a graph that's that's built tables, things like that. Start building them. When I get them to a place that I think works and could work for others, I'll share it in the um, in the Cadence Cloud and kind of keep coming back to it. Um, so. And and that's it. Let's see what else we've got. Just one last thing, you know, in the bottom of my in the bottom of my presentation. Let me close this. Let me close this. If I go to edit, one of the things that I do have too is I have got an, one more um, one more row. The row is using dynamic text. Um, it's using the post title. So whatever I've titled this. So this is, for example, the experiments one. Um, that that's in a row. And then this row, I gave a, a, go under advanced, go under, I, I've got a, a, a CSS class called sticky bottom. 
which is a favorite name of a CSS class for me. Um, so the sticky bottom class is just putting that that row on the bottom. So when I'm at on the page, and this might be where you put your branding and you know your logo, uh, the types of things that you want always saying on the screen. So through iterations, you build and improve on it and add to your your presentation. Um, you know, and then you start saying, "Hey, uh, I'm going to lock this in." My next presentation for the Hartford uh, WordPress Meetup will be done using this. And then, when we come across something we want to add, I can use that and build it into the library. So um, that's really that's kind of really cool. I think that's um, a great way to to build on using the tools that we're used to. Um, as far as where to find me, the I think the easiest place is go to ingersollwp.com and um, Here's, here's yet another example of, you know, this is simple. It's easier for me to put something in a tree of links is what we'll call it. We'll call it a tree of links. Um, but guess what? It is just a WordPress site. You know, in this case, when I built this, this was using um, generate blocks uh, buttons. Like you could certainly use cadence, but there's so many things that we can build with the tools that we have instead of going to these third parties and, and we have control over it. It's sitting on our on our servers and all. So um, this is uh, where to find the links. I'll add, I actually have the the, um, the link to the presentation here uh, to, to Cadence Amplify. I'll put the link to the presentation and start building some of this stuff out. But uh, Ingersoll WP to find me. Um, I think... Unless we want to go into just a little bit more experimentation and just kind of play with some things, if there's any questions, that's that kind of covers it. I will find I will on the site over here make sure I know where to make the the sidebar sticky. I, I, it was funny how I I couldn't find that, but that happens. Um, you know, you're so used to seeing something and you go back to it, and once you it's sort of a set it and forget it. Now to go back and show it was like for some reason. Um, Hey, I actually did find it. Yes, it's there. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. It's yeah. in the customizer under general. That's, That's where it is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I was looking at There's it in some... the widget area, and it's yeah. part of the customizer. It's hiding in the customizer. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I had to, um, just so you know, again, in terms of iterations and process, I was, um, this is a great example of, and I'll, I'll show the iteration if I can. I'm going to show. I'm going to show my screen one more time. Um, yeah, go if, for it. if we can. So in the www1wp.com presentation that I gave, right, kind of looks the same, but on the back end, if I go to edit the page, and this I did in a page on a post, so you can do it both. But instead of using the sidebar, this is created using. Um, a kind of a master row, it's a, it's a two column row. And then all the slides are then grouped as, done as groups under that, within that column. And then the uh, table of contents is set in, in a block to be sticky in a right side column. And it works and, and folks may wanna go this way, but I was like, I don't, this is, now it's kind of, it gets jumbled and all. And I said, boy, wouldn't it be great if I could just see the slides? And it was like, put the table of contents in the sidebar. Then in doing that, I tried to make it sticky and I and I, I tried to use um, the option to make it sticky and it didn't work in the sidebar. Um, so there's a block that I've used to make things sticky in the past and that did work. And then I did a quick search and there it is. It's built into Cadence couldn't remember what it was because I just put it in there, which is the under customizer um, and, and, and setting that. So again, those iterations, make it work and then refine it. Um, I, I think kind of worked really well in this case. All right, is there anything else uh, that we can talk about? And want me to show any more? I just like this, you know, when you're giving a presentation and somebody says, you know, talks about something back, we, in our PowerPoint presentations, we ended up not showing it as a slide, but showing it in edit mode because we were always going to the slide list. Yeah. Um, to go back to things. And it was like, again, using that table of contents block, 
using the headings and being able to just have that there, but now in a web page, um, just it it replicated that in a in a much better way. Um, so you know that was that's part of the hey, this is why why are we doing that other than habit. Which I think is yeah. you know, the, the the most the, the Such reason a good point. To do the things that they do. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you yeah. so much. I love learning things that you can do in Cadence that I'm like, I didn't even know that you could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've been working with Cadence for a long time. It's just kind of thinking outside the box. So well, I that, love it, that. it's, so much. that's it. It's it's looking at all the tools that are available and figuring how can yeah. I how can I put them together? And that in in this case, and that's why I thought. This also could work not only you know for building slides, but just to get, you know, there there may be similar other applications for this, you know, for yeah. again, just thinking not in terms of a web page, but what other things that we do that uses content and presents it in a certain way that we want to share. Um, I think totally. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm curious what kind of made you start thinking like, oh, maybe I can make a presentation within WordPress. Cause I think a lot of people don't, they don't have that thinking. So what I'm curious well, how you got to that point. Yeah, honestly, it started a few years ago. There was a WordCamp that was online, and they used, they did all the presentations in that case as a slideshow in WordPress. And I was like, well, that's obviously a great thing to do. Um, and there is a plugin. Yeah. It hasn't been updated in three years. There is a slide plugin um, hmm. that is on the repository that does it. But again, not only do we have the tools here, but now instead of kind of locking yourself into a way that that slideshow plugin did slides, it's like just you, just it's just a matter of formatting and putting things. So it was like yeah. it was a few years ago doing it, and then yeah, you get into the habits. And then we did a we did a presentation on our favorite tools. And that was, I think, the first one. I don't know if you can see it on the, uh, on the screen. Oh, yeah, well, I that. Um, so this was kind of the first thing that we did um, under my sorely under paid attention to. And now I need to go back because now <laughs> I'm doing everything in the word. But the Hartford WordPress um, website that we have, um, as you can see, if I go to the home page of that, you know, putting all of our putting all of our presentations, I'm way out of date. But we we did a, a presentation on some of our favorite tools. So knowing that we were going to um, be showing these tools uh, directly, it was like, well, just put it on a website so we can link things to it. And that was kind of, so this this whole th set of the tools was just, um, you know, building a page that we can reference and then link out to. And then what was kind of neat with this was, again, in the effort to save time, be more efficient, whatever. I was like, is there block patterns, whatever? Well, if I show you, if I edit the page of of our tools presentation, everything in blocks, there is a plugin that doesn't like to load very quickly on the on the um, back end. Let me see if I'll go to, I'll go to the plugin list. But this plugin, basically, you put in the URL. Well, that happens with this. I probably got too many things open. But the, but the plugin, um, all I have to do is give it the URL, and it grabs the screenshot. It grabs the title. It grabs all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to. I didn't have to create all those little boxes. It was in this case, it was sure. a plugin uh, that that did that. So um, it was. That was the start of it going, oh, there's so many things that we're on the fly doing. So why don't we just build it into the presentation we're doing? And then it's like, now we're, you know, folks are used to seeing a slide. And yeah. as, as you saw, when I when I gave the presentation, sense. I don't have to click on the list. I could just simply scroll through it. Um, but the list is a good reference. You can see where I am in the presentation. You know, it's, it's more interactive when I need to jump back, that type of thing. So um, you have a lot of ways of using it yeah. instead of going, oh, next page, next page, next page on a PowerPoint. I could just, you know, I'm in it and I can scroll it and things like that. So, yeah. So awesome. I think actually now that I'm thinking about it, I think I remember Matt Mullen where I gave a presentation um, in the editor, in Gutenberg. Yes. Back in 2019 at Say the Word and everybody was like shocked. Like this is yeah. Gutenberg? Because Gutenberg was like, had just barely started surfacing then. So, but That's I had when I think it was, that. yeah. 
Yeah, that that's when I that's when I think it was right about right about that time. So um, that's cool. Yeah, I and love it. It, it just you know other than the fact that you need to serve it up somewhere, and there's a lot of ways you could put it on. Uh, use like a local install and put it up. Even if you don't want a, a website, you could put it up temporarily and then like an Insta WP or a Taste WP. There's a lot of ways, but I assume most of the folks we're dealing with, you know, this could just be a a um, a uh, post category that that you set up and have, and that's kind of how I did that here too. I haven't built that out yet, um, but on the back end, um, under my posts, and if we look at the categories, I've got a category called presentation. Now, once you have a category, then you could even say specifically say, well, this is a presentation. When I'm using this presentation, use the, you know, this particular sidebar. Maybe that's when you use sidebar too. So, you know, again, you start, you you just build on it and and and, and yeah. keep going from there and going. You know, you're not yeah. locked into any one way of doing it. You kind of think about it, how am I going to do it, and then you, you find the tools to do it. Go to the Cadence uh, Facebook group too, and you know, I'll I'll spend yeah. I spend time there, um, sharing some ideas. Um, you know, we talk a lot about it on in in our in the Hartford WordPress. We did a build presentation. We decided to use Cadence because, again, it was at, that was not too long after it kind of got its big relaunch. Not relaunch. You know what I mean? The time it all of a sudden it really hit and with the with the block tools and all. And uh, yeah, it was a great place to start for us. So so awesome. Yeah. Cool. We do have one question. Yeah. Um, this is from Pascal. So is there any way to limit access to the slides without having to set up WP users? To limit, well, like however you do with any site. So any kind of um, restrict content um, plugin would work for that type of thing, if that's what we mean. Um, mm -hmm. Password protecting um, a, a page or a post. So again, it's all, it's it's whatever you would do, but you could certainly lock presentations behind some, um, there, there's a many uh, free uh, plugins that'll allow you to restrict access and say, okay, all all presentation posts can be restricted to, you know, people who are signed in or signed in at a certain level or things mm -hmm. like that, so. Yeah. I, I hope awesome. that answers. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that's all we have. Peter, thanks Alrighty. so much for joining us. That was a great way to kickstart the day. That was so great. Kickstart it by doing it. <laughs> and then, yes. You know what I mean? Like kind of got right into, totally. the, into the editor, including uh, uh, forgetting to go to the customizer versus... <laughs> That's okay. It I'll happens all that the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that people will watch you to be like, oh, yeah, I do that all the time. Because yeah. it's hard to know. There's a lot of studies. So yep. it's very yeah, easy cool. to forget. But Great. But anyway, we super appreciate it. Um, oh, my thanks pleasure. for being here. It. And okay. to everyone else watching, we'll be back at the top of the hour with, um, I believe, Bet is next. Bet Hannon. So see you guys soon. Very good.